So you've probably heard about NA10 by now. Some people are using it to automate parts of their work, while others are building entire businesses using it. But most people waste hours on automations that should take just a few minutes. That's why in this video, I'll show you eight tips for building NA10 automations faster based on dozens of client projects and hundreds of workflows. So let's get started. My name is Eric Otten. I make videos about online business and automation. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. I make videos like these all the time. Now, the first tip is planning. If you are going to build out NA10 workflows, the first step is to plan out exactly what inputs you have and what outputs it will produce. As the saying goes, if you gave me six hours to chop down a tree, I would spend the first four sharpening the ax. This is a quote attributed to US President Abraham Lincoln and describes the importance of planning before you begin executing. So when you get your client requirements, figure out what data sources you have, what operations you will need to perform, and then what output should happen. Should it be sending a message? Should it be posting to a database? What will your workflow end up actually producing and then work backwards from there? You can plan this out on a Google Doc like I do or any other text editing tool. Now, the next tip we have is actually inside of NA10 and it has to do with keyboard shortcuts. So you're probably aware of Command or Control S, which is to save your workflow, Command or Control Z, which is to undo, and Command or Control Shift Z, which is to redo what you just undid. But there are a few more shortcuts that can drastically improve the speed at which you develop your workflows. For example, we have Tab, which is to add a new node. Once you have your node added, you can click Tab again to add a new node, type in which node you want to select, use the arrow keys to choose from the list of available options, click enter, and then when you click escape, you have the node automatically added to your workflow. You can use the arrow keys to switch between nodes that are in a chain, and you can hit Control or Command D to duplicate the node. A10 has a long list of shortcuts that I'm gonna show on screen, and when you begin adding these, you can save time in your development because you don't have to pick up your mouse, click here, click there. You can use your keyboard so your hands don't have to move. Our next tip has to do with the HTTP node. So anytime that you're gonna make an API request using NA10, you're gonna use the HTTP node. And what a lot of people do is they select their method, get, post, they add the URL, they add their query parameters, they add the body, they type all this out manually. But there is a button on here called import curl, which allows you to import a curl command and all of these values are automatically populated. For example, I have the API documentation for Go High Level pulled up here. This is the CRM that I use inside of my business and that I offer for clients of my software. But here we have a curl command generator. So all you have to do is copy the curl command that gets generated, go back to your workflow, click on import curl, and then paste the command that's just been generated. After that, all of these fields will be automatically populated so you can begin editing them. And this also works even if you're using an unofficial API. So let's take the school website. I've just made a post on my community. And what you can do is you can copy the curl request that is made in your browser. Then just go back to NA10, click on import curl, and you can paste the request that was made from your browser directly. Now, whenever I run this command, it will generate a post inside of my school community. Tip number four for building NA10 workflows quickly is to understand project management skills. Oftentimes you will have clients who come to you and they want to build out an NA10 workflow or any sort of solution that might use NA10 on the back end and they come to you with a grand vision of what they want to achieve. Typically when this happens, they don't understand the technical terms behind what they're asking for, they just want the solution. And so your job whenever you adopt the project manager role is to be able to turn their ideas in non-technical terminology into technical terms that you can understand and then develop. So a few tips that I have for project management are understand scope. Oftentimes when you have non-technical clients, they might have an idea for something and not realize what actually goes into that on the technical side. And so if you break down to them, what is going to be required if you build out this feature, they might decide, okay, that's too much work. I don't want to pay you that much for this feature. Let's scrap it. This can help avoid scope creep, which is where you agree with a client on a specific set of tasks and features that you want to build. And over time, this scope expands to include things that you weren't originally paid for. So when you help your client understand the technology behind what you're building, then you can avoid scope creep and help save yourself time. Another tip that I have for client calls is to not focus on the inputs that the client necessarily says, but ask them simply, what do you want to achieve? What do you want this workflow to do? You'll notice very often that non-technical founders will generate requirements with ChatGPT, oftentimes using terms that are not real. These terms are based on the feedback loop that happens when you talk with ChatGPT over and over again. It comes up with nonsense. It comes up with things that are not real. So you can position yourself as a problem solver by asking them what they want the end goal to be and then working backwards from there. This also makes you more valuable because rather than being a technician, you are now in the manager role. Sure, you might be managing yourself only, but you are developing the skill set of self-agency, which is the ability to take actions on your own without it having to be broken down step by step. Tip five for building NA10 workflows faster is to use a technique called rubber ducking. 
This idea comes from software development, where developers will have a literal rubber duck on their desk, and whenever they run into a problem, they will speak to the rubber duck as if it were their coworker or another developer, and they will break down their problem by speaking it out loud. And what this does is it helps you organize your thoughts. If you have to speak out loud, you will quickly realize if your thoughts are incoherent. How many times have you had a problem in your life that you just couldn't solve? So you talk to a friend, and after describing your problem, you find out the answer to your solution on your own before they can even reply. This is the exact same concept, but rather than waiting to call somebody, you just speak out loud. It's gonna seem a bit strange at first, but I guarantee that it's gonna help you get over these hurdles. So next time you're stuck, try out Rubber Duck. Tip number seven for saving time in your NA10 workflows is to use community nodes. As the name entails, community nodes are custom nodes that are developed by the NA10 community that solve specific functionality. So for example, inside of my NA10 instance, I have the NA10 Notion Markdown node which converts markdown text into Notion blocks. So next time there's a feature that you wish was added to NA10, check the community nodes to see if someone has already developed it. And tip number eight for building better workflows and less time is to use the code nodes inside of NA10 anytime that you're doing data manipulation. So let's say we have an array. So we have an array of four different names, and if we wanted to extract the last name from each of these people without using the code node, this is what it would look like. We would first split out the names into a list of items, Next, we would use the set node. We would set the name to the value that we received, and then we would split it, and then we would select the second item to get the last name. And then we'll have to aggregate these nodes back together. And now we have a list of all of the last names. Now this process took three different nodes, but what we can do instead is use a single code node. We simply define the array, and then we can use JavaScript to match each of these names to the last name. And there we go, we have a list of last names. And this only took one node which makes it a lot easier to maintain, especially considering that this would have created multiple items and then aggregated the items back together into an array. And as you guys have probably noticed, when you split out items inside of NA10, it can get pretty confusing, so it helps to have a single item that is passed between these nodes. And if you're not a developer, you can actually use ChatGPT to write the JavaScript code for you. I've developed a custom GPT that is designed specifically for the NA10 code node, where you can tell it the input that you have and what you want to do and it will write the code to do exactly that. So I told this GPT I have an array of names and I want to extract the last names, and it will write the code to do exactly that, formatted in the way that NA10 expects. So we can go back to the code that I just wrote, replace it, and it performs the exact same operation and we get the exact same output. I'll put the link to this custom GPT inside of my free school community, which you can join using the link down below, along with tons of other guides. So guys, that is it for my eight tips for building NA10 workflows faster. If you're new to this channel and you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.